My name is Deep Saini. I'm the President and Vice Chancellor of Dalhousie University, and this is The Deep Dive. On this episode of The Deep Dive, I welcome our two guests, Kathy Martin and Jelana Lewis. Hello, uh, Kathy and Jelana. What a pleasure to meet you here on uh, on the virtual Zoom platform, and, and welcome to Deep Dive. It's it's a pleasure to have uh, with us uh, two of you together. Uh, just by way of introductions, uh, Kathy uh, Kathy Martin is uh, uh, our director of Indigenous Community Engagement, and uh, Jelana is the director of African Nova Scotian uh, Community Engagement. Both of them are. Uh, relatively new appointees at Dalhousie University, and uh, we are going to discuss their roles today and uh, and the plans you have for the two roles. So, you know, listen, before we go any further, uh, let's just begin uh, at the beginning. And uh, so I'd like to know a bit more about uh, your backgrounds, uh, you know, what is the journey that brought you here and why is it that this role interested both of you? So let me start with Kathy. I will go in alphabetical order. And so Kathy, uh, please please share some of that uh, information and your thoughts with us. Okay. Well, I'm um, I'm a member of the Millbrook Mi'kmaq Nation or Mi'kmaq community near Truro, Nova Scotia, and I'm uh, Mi'kmaq, and I've um, been part of Dalhousie's. Um, community since 1976 when I um, applied and, and came to school here and so I studied at Dell and then I um, went off and did many many things but oftentimes over the last 40 years I've managed to find my way back to Dalhousie University a few times most of the time throughout my career I've been working on areas of um, opening access for education for other kinds of programs across the country. And um, so I, and, and of course, uh, working with closely with my own Mi'kmaq and Willowstoke communities in the Atlantic region. So I came back to Dell again this year, uh, well, a year ago, March, almost a year. And I was very pleased to be able to come back and maybe continue the work that I've been doing off and on with Dalhousie and other universities. So that's my background. I'm usually making films. I'm a filmmaker. And so I, and a good reason for that was because I found that wasn't enough in our curriculum, in our school systems that spoke or spoke from our point of view or spoke at all in a good way about um, Mi'kmaq and Indigenous people in the country. So I found that film was a great way to reach the world by making a film and, and trying to um, always show the beauty and the positive aspects of our communities. Thank you, Kathy. That's uh, very appropriate. No, no ordinary filmmaker either, an award-winning one. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes. Jelana, you, you know, your, your journey to this position and why? Um, so I grew up in the north end of Halifax. I have roots in the community of Hammond's Plains. Um, and I, like Kathy, also attended Dalhousie University. Um, and I was there. And when I was there, I had no idea that I'd be back in this position. Um, and so throughout my time following um, my law degree at, from Dalhousie. I've worked in social justice settings, um, worked on access to legal justice projects, and I've had the opportunity to work on lots of initiatives uh, based in my community, the African Nova Scotian community, which has been really great. Um, and so when this role came up, I was encouraged by community members to apply for the position, which was also very helpful for me because sometimes you doubt yourself and you're not sure if you're ready to be in a particular role um, or if it's the right job for you. Um, but thanks to the encouragement from community members, I did apply. Um, and the more that I kind of prepared for the interview process, the more I realized um, the, the type of kind of 
the, the proximity to change that I could have if I did step into this role. So it got me more excited about the job, getting ready for the, the interview. Um, and I was really, really pleased to find myself in this position. Um, and it's been really great so far to work at an institution that I'm connected to myself as a former student, but also to be at the institution um, to connect my community to the institution. So I had no idea I would end up in this role, um, but now that I look back, it feels like it's the right fit for me. And it certainly feels feel like this from the houses standpoint, because I, I could sense it when when your announced your your appointments were announced, uh, you know, first there was a lot of excitement about the two positions being created, then and then even more excitement when the community found out that two of you are going to be uh, to be in those positions. So welcome to Dalhousie, and uh, again. Um, so speaking of welcomes to Dalhousie, you've had a strange welcome to Dalhousie in practical sense. Uh, you know, you've been here, you know, several months now, and started more or less together within a couple of months of each other, and then and then it all happened in the middle of COVID-19 pandemic. Now you're both responsible for community connections, and community connections by definition involve meeting people. And in your case, uh, you know, like that, many of us, you are also confined to your own homes or offices, and and relying on uh, virtual platforms to connect with people and so on. So, how has that experience been for you? You know, starting in the middle of a pandemic and trying to do your job effectively? Um, it's been really interesting. It's been unlike any other uh, job experience I've ever had, but I am fortunate that I've worked from home in the past. So this concept is not entirely new to me. Um, one benefit I think that's come out of working virtually in this role is that it's forced me to take the time to get to know the institution, my coworkers, colleagues, folks from different departments and faculties. And because I cannot plan or host events, um, in-person events with my community, it's kind of forced me to pause on that and take the time to build relationships internally. So I think rather than trying to do both things at the same time, I've actually carved out this initial kind of phase to make sure that I understand the university, folks from the university community know who I am, so that when we can have in-person um, gatherings, my relationships with the university are strong. And Kathy, you can probably say the same thing, but my relationships with the African Nova Scotian community have already been established even before I started in this role. But in order for me to be able to do my job, I think that I have to have really strong relationships with the university community and with the African Nova Scotian community. So although it's been really weird to get to know colleagues virtually, I would say it's forced me to spend more time trying to do that. And I think that those relationships will benefit my position in the long term. Mm, thank you. Kathy? I started March 1st. And I went home to work on March 15th. So in the first two weeks, I was really happy to be on campus. And I, I unlike uh, Jelena, I got to see the office people were working out of. And I loved, it was like reuniting with my family. Uh, every corner of the university, I ended up having meeting one of my colleagues, one of my good friends and relatives who also work here and spent, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes sometimes just meeting on the sidewalk. And um, I loved that. And I was very excited about that. And then suddenly we went, all went home. So um, like Jelena, I've spent a lot of time um, and, and we've been, both of us have just been overwhelmed with the support and the outreach from the university community from all departments. Um, it's, it's overwhelming sometimes because there's such a need. And um, I, I, I like the idea of building the relationship within the, within the university um, because when we try, when, what, what we're trying to do is um, 
engage the communities, our communities and the Dalhousie community with each other and engage in something much more meaningful than has been in the past. So I'm, a, I'm liking that I'm spending some time here first to get to know who's out there, who, who would benefit from, from coming to our, our communities. And uh, I believe that when we're ready, we'll decide who gets in the first car, in the first wagon, and um, we'll bring those people that we know um, are hoping to make a difference and bring them to the community instead of us always coming to the university community. That's uh, very well put. Um, so now, you know, as, as we speak about creating that community connection, it's, uh, and, and, and remember this is happening in the overall context of the houses uh, strong and 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 strengthening commitment to to uh, you know equity diversity inclusion and accessibility particularly with regard to our Mi'kmaq and African Nova Scotian communities yes. um, so there is this this your passion and and the institutional commitment meeting together in that confluence uh, where do you see the greatest opportunities for us where do you see us together being able to make the greatest impact and how would we know that impact is happening how would we measure it let's go with kathy first this time well first of all we the community generally has specific areas of needs um, we need more health professionals in all areas within our community and we need our own people um, working in those positions. And um, there's other areas of need as you look around in Mi'kmaq, and that's in Nova Scotia, but we have, we're a Mi'kmaq nation that spreads from Newfoundland to New Brunswick, Maine, Quebec, and PEI. So uh, we consider ourselves as a nation. And so how do we get into the communities to find out what they need. And we have some wonderful people in our community that have been working at this forever from within, our education directors, our chiefs, our councils, may, but a lot of it, our staff at community level and at organizational level. So I think um, if we can determine, like I'd like to say we need to take a little bit at a time. It's been um, over 500 years of contact with the new people that have arrived to our territory. So we just can't change it overnight. We know that, but, but uh, when you look at it in perspective, we've been here for 14,000 years. So 500 is not much. And we see that. Um, I think there needs to be a lot more connection and understanding from the Dalhousie community. And that the only way to do that is to start to attend and be part of our community at just, just walk in, be part of it, not have to always be going for specific things. And, and also not just, um, focus on the needs, the great needs. There's a lot of students that are not interested in chemistry or, or health sciences, but they can excel in all kinds of areas. And I believe we have so much to offer the academia, the Dalhousie community. We have so much to offer. And I know right now during COVID and climate change, we're being looked, we're being looked to and asked for our knowledge and we have to take advantage of that. So I, I know I gave you a couple ways, but um, we need to find the needs and we need to get more of our uh, community engaged and interested in computer science or compute or technology. That's the way of the future. It has been the way. Well, thank you for that. And I, you know, I, I like your 
your focus on taking the time to do it right. And you know, something that I often refer to as eating the elephant one bite at a time and not trying to eat the elephant in one bite. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I like that. To, you know, take the time, but do it right. Yes. Don't rush it and do it wrong. Um, Jelana, your thoughts on it? Um, I think there's lots of opportunities for Dalhousie to kind of better engage. And I'm not sure exactly what success looks like. I don't know if we're kind of there yet to even be prepared to identify it. But I do think that unlike a lot of institutions, Dalhousie has a bit of a roadmap for building relationships with historic communities. So um, the IBM initiative, which Kathy, I know you were part of helping to establish that, the transition year program, the plans program, there are models of finding ways to better engage um, African Nova Scotian Mi'kmaq communities that exist already in the university that have been around for decades. So I do think that I'm fortunate to be at a place where I'm not, um, I'm not working at an institution where I need to prove that these types of initiatives are important. I do think that we need more of them. So I think um, working towards helping other faculties think about how they can increase numbers of African Nova Scotians within their programs, that's really important. Um, but I think we can look to the successes of the, of the the initiatives that have been established to show why they matter um, and how beneficial they can be in the long term to have folks working in lots of different fields, like Kathy mentioned, technology, computer science. Um, I think those areas could benefit from the sorts of initiatives that we see at the Faculty of Law. So I think when it becomes normal for me to know of young African Nova Scotian architecture graduates, engineering graduates, when that is normalized, when there are no longer firsts from our community, I think we'll know that there's success in that. Um, I don't think it's about specific numbers per se or quotas, but I think when I can talk to a high school student and connect them with an African Nova Scotian graduate from multiple uh, faculties, I think I'll know that we're in a better place than we than we are in, or that we have been in the past. So I think I think there's been momentum at Dalhousie, and we just have to keep it going. And I I'm looking forward to kind of helping the university um, really step into its potential because I know that it's there as an IBM initiative graduate myself. I know that it's there, but I think that we can do more. So that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping to do. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, and, and thanks for reminding us that, you know, Dalhousie has been at the vanguard of, um, of this effort in a number of our programs are actually, you know, the, the benchmarks by which others measure, uh, you know, engagement in, in, in creating access, uh, you know, transition year, year program, for example, has had amazing results, you know, Imhotep's Legacy Academy, and you mentioned IBNM, and, and you are a graduate of that program, you know, that, I mean, what better uh, proof of success than having somebody like you, uh, you know, in front of us who's graduated from those that program. Also, let's not forget there are you know there are those in 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 our communities, uh, you know, these two leading communities in Nova Scotia, who may be interested in philosophy and and poetry and creative writing and uh, you know and, and political science and so on. So let, let's not not leave that behind and and give that broad opportunity to everybody to get involved. Now, speaking about getting involved, I, that brings me to. Perhaps the last question I would want to ask you: What would you say to those of us in the institution? There are many. I mean, many are involved, but others probably need to get involved. We have to have a broad community effort. So, those in the community who are watching this video, who want to get involved, what would be your advice to them? How do they get involved and and be part of making the difference? Um, I would say, I mean, I think it's great if people consider kind of their starting place and where they are um, and think about kind of their existing networks or existing kind of communities or folks in their network that they hadn't really thought of as being part of their community initially. Um, so I would say I, I've met so many different 
um, members of the Dalhousie community in the past few months that I've been in this role. And I've always tried to say, kind of reach out, let me know if there's anything that you think I might be interested in. And I've heard from lots of folks who might have emailed me and said, oh, I met you in this Teams meeting, or I met you in this Zoom meeting, and the faculty I'm at is having this event, or we have this scholarship. And that's really helpful for me to know because I can then share that information or provide feedback and also build relationships. So it's great when folks are just reaching out. I think that that's really helpful. Um, I would say support African Nova Scotian staff and faculty and students within your your small kind of university bubble um, and find out what types of things folks are working on um, internally. Um, Cause I, like I said, there's a lot already happening at the university. I'm trying to figure out everything that's happening myself. I'm stepping into a place where folks are already taking initiative, but right now it's kind of a matter of me making sure that I know what's going on so that I can be part of it. So I would say, take the time to ask the questions. Are there any initiatives focused on the African Nova Scotian community in my faculty, in my department? If there are none, can we start talking about it? Who can we bring in to join these conversations? Um, and there's a lot happening virtually right now as well for people who want to learn more about history, get more involved, learn about challenges and issues facing communities. So I would say kind of consider where you are and look to your resources, your inbox, some of the invitations that you might have not really paid attention to in the past, um, and reach out to folks and participate and learn. This is a really great time for learning, I think, um, and humbling yourself, learning more about the history of African Nova Scotians is, is really helpful and will help create a foundation so that when we can engage in person and, and go to physical spaces physically, um, we already have an understanding. Um, so it, I think engagement can look all sorts of ways for many different people, but I do think there's so much happening at Dalhousie that if you spend even five minutes, you can find a way to engage yourself. Those are very insightful comments, uh, Delana, and you know, they, they essentially, I saw a road opening in front of me as I listened to you. And Kathy, do you want to add any more? Uh, you know, I love when Jelena goes first because she covers everything and I just get to add, you know, a few things. I am, um, I've already had some experience just since I came here this time with uh, members of not just the academia, but uh, members of the staff in different departments asking how can they become more connected and understanding of the communities. And I invite them. I say, well, why don't you come to something in the community? And, and asked, well, can you let me know when and where and can you connect me? And that's what I think I can do um, on Dalhousie's uh, campus. We are sitting on Mi'kma'ki territory. It's all our territory. So that, that's kind of hard to ask people to accept, as you know. It's no, no uh, secret that um, that's not being well received around the province and around the region. So like Jelena said, there needs to be a lot more education done by this university through courses, through programming, for the university. But again, we can't just spend, always spend our time working with the community outside of our community. We're here to work in our community and everybody that wants to be part of it, you know, join us. So I think if we spend some time really encouraging and celebrating um, the community successes, it will go a long way to invite um, our community to, to step up and do a little more with this community. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. And, you know, I go back to the beginnings of what you both said, that it all starts with us getting to know one another, getting out of our silos and make, taking that step to understand what the other community is all about. And, and, and um, 
I certainly intend to do that. I, Yolanda knows that I've already spoken about, I'm just waiting for this pandemic to be over so I can get out actually in real communities, not virtual communities. And I urge everybody else to think about that. Listen, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. I look forward to other opportunities when we will be sitting together like this and, and conversing. And, uh, and let's together continue to not only hope for better, state of our society and, and our institution, but actually uh, actively work towards it. Thank you. Thanks very much.